Hi, this is Jeff with Controlled Elements Heating, Air Conditioning, and Refrigeration Company. Uh, today we're going to look at a Copeland three-phase uh, 230 volt reciprocating hermetic compressor. Uh, this thing failed after two years of operation. It was in a, uh, a supermarket controlling an R22 medium temp merchandiser. It's a, two 12-foot Tyler merchandiser cases uh, joined together. So we had a 24-foot case, uh, half-inch liquid line, and an inch and an eighth suction return line. Um, basically, this thing, uh, pressures were equalized, and the valve plates are out, or something's going on internally. So we're going to cut this sucker open and try and see what took it down. Uh, the piping has got a rise of about 20 feet. It's got a decent oil trap, a good slope on the horizontal section of piping. So, uh, it would have been better, obviously, if we had a semi-hermetic semi compressor in this application, but we don't. There's no oil separator, no accumulator. Um, I'm thinking we either took a liquid slug or uh, we lost our oil. We're going to cut this compressor open and find out what exactly took it down, um, hopefully. But anyways, I went ahead and installed a new compressor. Um, I put in a suction accumulator, and hopefully when we rip this thing open, we can tell uh, what took out this old one. Uh, the warranty had expired about a month before this thing failed. So it was unfortunate, but let's see if we can't figure out what took it down. And this thing here is about 53,000 BTU. Alright, let's rip it open. Okay, so we got the motor uh, cut in half here on this uh, hermetically sealed compressor. Let's go ahead and take a look under the top of this bad boy. I cut it right underneath the uh, electrical terminals here so we can see what's going on with that. Basically, we'll take the whole top of this thing and she's going to come off. This is what the underneath section of our uh, compressor is going to look like. So these wires right here actually go to your your motor. This right here is just your motor housing. And then this would have been the, uh, this is your suction inlet right here. And then the top of the motor housing has this recessed section. That's actually where the spring right here this shock absorber in the top of the compressor shell sits inside of this recessed area that allows the motor to move around vibrate and not make as much noise um, if you ever have a motor that's making an excessive amount of noise on startup it's a good possibility that you've thrown that spring or something's out of alignment with it and the motors clanking around banging on the side of the crankcase or the shell Anyways, right here is your outside terminals for your electrical. That's where the electrical was connected. I went ahead and cut that. That's this bad boy. Energizes the motor. Inside this motor housing, we're going to have a, uh, a rotor. Um, it's going to pump up and down, attached to the crankshaft, and then the bearings, which are down underneath in the bottom here. We're not going to be able to get to those just yet. But you take your cool gas in here gonna cool off your motor windings get pumped down in through the compressor and then at the bottom of the compressor it's tough to see but right down in here is gonna be some valve plates probably a series of two discharge plates that kick the discharge uh, gas into a holding section which then shoots it out and through your first muffler this is your primary muffler right here it's got this J style tube on it some of these compressors have a secondary muffler, which is tougher to see. It's going to be underneath this compressor. I don't know if this one does. But once you come through your muffler, this tube is actually going to go down into your oil bath. You can see that I actually still have some oil down there. So I'm going to take these valve plates apart and see if there was another cause. It looks like we have plenty of oil still left in the crankcase in the bottom of this compressor. This tube out of the muffler comes down into the oil bath, probably helps to heat up that oil, and then it goes ahead and comes up 
and discharges right here out of your discharge line. And as a side note, this would be where your crankcase heater had sat. You can see it's got that heat uh, transfer paste in there. I pulled out this crankcase heater, but it would have sat in there. And the actual well down at the bottom there only sticks in, I'd say, about an inch and a half. Sits in the oil bath and it helps to keep the oil heated up so it doesn't mix with the refrigerant vapor. And another note, when this top shell would have been on, you can see right there is my suction line. As it enters, there's actually going to be a little gap right here before it hits the suction on the, uh, on the uh, compressor motor. And I'm assuming when the gas comes into the actual motor, that's what helps surround the actual motor, get down in the crankcase, and keep this thing cool as well. There's also a series of springs down here at the bottom of the motor, which is why this thing is rocking back and forth right now. So we've got the top spring, we've got those bottom springs, and our full motor housing. Let's take this thing apart and see if we can find uh, any issues with the valve plates. Okay, we got the uh, the rest of this compressor taken apart. It's pretty obvious uh, as soon as I took this apart what the issue was with this compressor. Anyways, this tube here from this top shell, the cooling gas comes in. It's going to cool off the actual motor. Then it comes down this set of tubes. You got one here and one down to cool the bottom section of that motor. This sucker comes off. As soon as I took this off, it was pretty easy to see. We got a, a bunch of uh, metal shavings sitting right inside the motor housing. It's not a good sign. So you can look down here on the valve plates. I've cut the muffler line right here. I went ahead and took out the bolts that held this valve plate in place. So, let's take off the valve cover. You can see right away in the base of this, that there's quite a few metal shavings sitting down on the bottom of this. It mixed in with the oil, it doesn't look too good. But then, you got the aha moment when you take a look at this valve plate. This plate is shot. See the actual valves? plates right here are warped and they're kicked out the, uh, the bottom section on this valve plate is just totally destroyed but it gets better turn this sucker over look at those plates they just got sheared off this thing took a slug it either took a liquid slug or it took an oil slug but something got into this compressor <clears throat> went ahead and destroyed it but once this thing takes a slug you can see the pistons down here look how destroyed these are that thing is just trashed the bottom ones trashed too so obviously this compressor uh, didn't stand a chance probably took a slug broke a valve plate <clears throat> discharger the suction valve once it does that you get that piece of metal in there and it just hammered itself until it died I mean, it wouldn't have taken long at this stage of the game to kill this compressor. I went ahead and dumped the oil out of the sump, and I could tell when I first cut this open. Inside the oil and the sump was a mixture of metal shavings. Yeah, it's not a real good sign. Hopefully this thing died before I got too many of these shavings into my, uh, my system. So, this is a good reason why you change out a compressor like this and put in a... Uh, a suction filter as long uh, as well as a new filter dryer on the liquid line you don't want too many of these shavings kicking through your system so you're just asking for more problems anyways I think that's it on this uh, hermetic compressor there's nothing else I'm gonna do except throw this thing in in the trash that's it uh, hopefully you learned a little something from this uh, good luck out there I think in this case, uh, I just am going to go back a couple times, check this system, make sure my superheat is spot on. Like I said, I put in a, uh, a suction accumulator, so hopefully that will help out uh, in taking any liquid slugs. And this is a liquid solenoid pump down system, so we want to make sure that solenoid's not leaking by. And um, that's it. 
right, we'll have to stay on top of this one. Can't afford to lose another compressor. All right, good luck out there, and uh, take care.